We're going to ask you to stand at this time for prayer. Our gracious and eternal Father, we do give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for last night's lying down and this morning arising. God, we thank you for all things. Father, we thank you. We want to take the time right now to let you know that we appreciate you. Thank you for every bountiful blessings you bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for your patience and your love toward our lives. How you suffered, bled, and died for your people, oh God. Oh, Father, we ask that you will be in our midst this afternoon. Father, we ask that you will be in our midst to receive your praise. Search our hearts today. If you search our hearts, God, you'll find that we love you. That we are a grateful people, oh God. Grateful for the things that you have done in our lives. Oh, Father, we ask that you will bless everything under the sound of my voice, oh God. God, bless every praise, every song that's sung to your glory. God, bless your word on tonight, oh God. God, remember the preacher, oh God. Speak from your mountain, oh God, we pray. Oh, God, everyone that comes through the doors, God, lay your hands on your people, we pray. In the name of Jesus. God, remember our leader today, oh God. Touch him and strengthen him and keep him, we pray. God, give him the strength to lead your people. In the name of Jesus. God, this is our prayer today. Receive your praise. Receive your people. In Jesus' name, we pray and for your glory. Let the people of God say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to your high name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God Come on, praise highest. the Lord, everybody. Is God good to you? Is God good to you? All year long, he's been good to us. And we magnify him. We glorify him. We lift him up. Hallelujah. So we came to celebrate today. Yes, God. So shake yourself if you're tired. Tell yourself and command yourself That's as right. he commanded us That's that we right. came to rejoice. Yes. We came yes. to rejoice. And it's all about worshiping him. Come on and worship with us. It's all about worshiping. It's all about worshiping you and praising, and praising you. Lifting high your name. Lifting high your name. Let heaven and earth proclaim. It's all about worshiping you and praising, and praising you. Lifting high your name. Lifting high your name.
lifted up. He is high and lifted up. And his train fills the temple. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a strong God. And in this feast, we shall surely rejoice. Come on, we shall surely rejoice. It's not a suggestion. It's not advice. It's not a recommendation. It's a command. You shall surely rejoice. Whether you feel like it or not, you better rejoice. So if you don't feel like it, you better tell your soul to bless thou the Lord. You better command your soul to bless thou the Lord.
the law. Don't look at me. Bless the law. Bless the law. Bless him. Stop! 
there's a scripture that reads, Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh. Yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel. On the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem. Shechem. Is there any more hallelujahs? This is a day that we are to rejoice for all of his goodness toward us. And truly, truly, we all can say that God has been good. And that's an understatement. He has been magnificent in our lives. We cannot begin to number the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us. But we can conclude that God, you are good. Oh, so good. And today we giving him praise and we giving him thanks. We have been commanded to rejoice for his manifold blessings in our lives. Thank him for the Holy Ghost. Thank him for being saved. Thank him for sparing our lives.
not get the victory today. No, he didn't. And I want to give you this just brief testimony. I was on my way to church. Me, my mother, and my aunt went and picked them up. On our way back to the church, driving down St. Clair in the right hand. You know how when you're driving, when, when your car stops on the left side of you, and the car behind wants to get over. So he didn't see me in the rear, and he decided to wanted to go over, which made me have to jerk the whole car on over. Someone was sharing me their testimony today on their way to church, driving about 80, mile, 80 miles an hour on the highway. An 18-wheeler did the exact same thing, but made them go off into the grass. And can you imagine going 80 miles an hour off into the grass? What could have happened? Satan did not get the victory today. Satan did not get the victory today. I have nothing but great joy today. Nothing but praises for my God today. I tell you, it could have been another way. Things could have been a little bit different. But God. Hallelujah. My heart is glad. My heart is joyful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Love God today. I don't love him just because of what I can, what he gives me, but I love him because he saved me. Hallelujah. He loved me enough to save me. And that's what's most important to me. Things can come and things can go, but I'm glad today that I have salvation. Hallelujah. I'm saved today. Sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, to our pastor, Apostle Stephen L. Best, to our 
Bishop Askew, uh, Bishop Cummings, to our elders, speaking on today to my wife, to you, the people of God. We thank God for your presence, how he allowed us just to come into this house once again. Hallelujah. We magnify him for all things. made a way. Hallelujah. He's made many ways. Amen. At this time, we're going to call on our Brother Curtis Williams II to come and tell us how he had made a way for him. God bless you. Receive me at this time by sending now. Praise the Lord. I give honor to God, to the pastor, first lady, and everyone in their respective positions. I just want to quickly stand and thank God for allowing me to be able to excel in school while in the pandemic. Even in the pandemic, he's still making ways for us. We have so many reasons to praise our God. From the youth to the hoary head. God has given us many reasons. And let us know that he has made the way for you. Hallelujah. And we magnify him. the Lord for all things we thank him for his goodness to us hallelujah
God in the hand clap. just can't help but to magnify God because it's just in us to give him all the glory and all of the praise again we thank the almighty God for his presence allowing us just to be here on today we thank God for you who have came from far and near to be in the house of the Lord at this time we're going to ask you to prepare for our fruit march, amen, and you will be in the hands of our fruit leaders.
children a food offering. God has been good. His goodness is displayed today. At this time, we're going to ask the selection coming from Shiloh Temple Choir. We ask that you receive the choir at this time by standing man as they come.
to give him praise and to serve him. Hallelujah. Time for the word of God. It's a good time for a meal right now. Amen. The word of God is coming through the person of our minister, Simeon Bess. We ask that you would sit attentively and hear what thus saith the Lord. Receive him at this time by saying amen as he comes. been praising him because he's great and he's good he's kind he's an awesome God and there's nobody like him in all the earth we honor the resident apostle <laughs> apostle Stephen L. Best our leader to the shepherd's mother I like those titles uh, not that one um <laughs> God is to be praised. We honor all of the ministry, all of you, the people of God. I will, let's, let's be honest. Woo! It's tabernacle. It's tabernacle. And the body doesn't really want to get on board because it's tired. I'm talking about this is real tiredness. This is real. This ain't no joke. This is real tiredness. Um, I'm feeling it, and I'm like, but Lord, I know what you said. So I'm trying to find unique ways, different ways to praise God, just to make sure he knows that I know that he's good. And we were talking earlier, Evangelist Allen is saying, uh, you know, I, we believe that they did some choreography back in the day. They did some things together. And, you know, we go in, we go in 100 all the time. And 
that'll wear you out. But um, we're here. We're here. <laughs> we're going to do our, our best. Um, I, I, I had more energy, I felt like, going to David Tolman. I'll be honest with you. I did. Nevertheless, great is the God we serve. Great is the God we serve. And so I'm going to do my best to deliver this and get out of the way. Well, we believe that the Lord has given us something to say. So what I want to do is um, we're here in the Feast of Tabernacles. I want to do a brief overview of why we are here. Um, why are we here? Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. And I'll be reading this from the NIV. It says, celebrate the festival of tabernacles for seven days. After you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your festival. I'll say that little part. Be joyful at your festival. You, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites, the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns. Verse 15, for seven days celebrate the festival to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the works of your hands, and your joy will be complete. From the scriptures, we understand that these seven days that we're in right now are all about the celebration that God has commanded. We are not left to our own feelings, our understandings, our opinions about this one. He has commanded it. He has clearly instructed us to celebrate and rejoice. Not only are we commanded to celebrate, but he has given us undeniable reasons to celebrate. You know he had done some things that you just can't deny. This was God. This is God. And he did the same for Israel when he delivered them out of Egypt. Psalm 78, verses 12 through 16. King James Version. Marvelous thing did he in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as in heat. Undeniable. You, undeniable. This was God. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud. And all the night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness. And gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rocks. And caused waters to run down like rivers. God wrought wonders for his people. He performed miracles right before their eyes. He made ways when it looked like there wasn't a way. He guided them every step of the way. And even, and we even see that Christ was right there with them. He was right there with them. He was the rock that gave them water. And we see the fulfillment of his promise when he says, I'll never leave you right. nor forsake you. How often do we feel like we are all alone? I'm in this thing by myself. I don't have anybody. These are things, the thoughts that come in our head. That God has forgotten all about us. We must remember what was said and should not give in to how we feel. Remember what he said. Forget about how you feel. I believe this year, Christ has manifested himself in various ways. And sometimes we were just unaware. Right. We didn't even know. He was right there with us. We thought we were, we were all alone. But he, God was, Christ was somebody's lawyer. Right. Uh -huh. He was somebody's doctor. Yeah. You didn't even know. They were defending you. Uh, they were taking care of you. He was somebody's Uber or Lyft driver. Uh -huh. And he was just letting you, I'm there. You had no idea. Maybe he was the cashier that gave you that smile that just sparked joy in your day. Just a smile. Saint God is with us, and he will become whatever we need him to be. What else did God do for Israel? Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 2 through 6. We're going to read this from the message version. I'm going to 
try to give you some more energy because I don't want, you know, if the person up here is like, uh, then the people are going to be like, uh. So I'm trying to give you some energy. <laughs> Moses called all Israel together and said, you've seen what your own, you've seen with your own eyes everything God did in Egypt to Pharaoh yes. and his servants mm -hmm. and to the land itself. The massive trials to which you were eyewitnesses. The great signs and miracle wonders. But God didn't give you an understanding heart or perceptive eyes or attentive ears until right now, this very day. You were unaware. I took you through the wilderness for 40 years. And through all that time, the clothes on your backs didn't wear out. The sandals on your feet didn't wear out. And you live well without bread and wine and beer. <laughs> Proving to you that I am in fact God, your God. Here we see that Moses reminds the people of God what God did for them. He rehearsed with them how they made it to the, that point in their life, that very point. Look how you made it. It was all God. For 40 years, Israel saw miracles day after day. After day, after day, after day. Right. 40 years, miracles. Right. Right. Miracles, nonstop. This is a sign to us. The unending providential care of the Almighty God right. is here with us. Unending, it never stops. He never runs out of supply. Right. He will always make sure you have something to drink, yeah. something to eat. He will always make sure you have clothes to wear. This feast, we make our boast in the one true God who sees to our every need. Our boast says, Psalms 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I'm here to tell you today, if God has it, you have it too. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness. If God has it, you have it too. You got to know that. If God has it, you have it. Because you belong to him. So far, we talked about this feast. I talked about the feast and God's ex expectation for us, from his people to rejoice and to recall what he's done. We've also talked about how relatable this feast is to us. And we, we recall the wonder working of El Shaddai, the Almighty, in our lives. Hasn't he worked wonders? Just think, hasn't he worked wonders? I thought 2019, 2020, 2019, we heard this magnificent word from the men of God, the women of God, and we were fired up, fired up, fired up, ready to go. The pandemic hit, and it just would appear, why now? Why during this time? We were just charged to, ready to go. But we have to understand, God's instructions have nothing to do with what's going on around you. Right. Right. They are his instructions. Right. Move forward. Right. So I looked at, you know, I, I, I wasn't married at the time. And, you know, I talked to my wife. Thank God for my wife. Um, and we, we were saying, at that time, she, she was my fiance, yeah. We were saying, okay, we're going to get married this such and such day. It was, you know what? It's a pandemic, but you know what? We got to move forward. I, we can't invite everybody. It, it is what it is. We got to move forward. But before that, I got to find a place to live. I got to, where am I going to stay? All right. oh, during this pandemic, uh, talk to a realtor. Long story short, I mean, your proof for conventional. No, we're going to go back to FHA. No, we're going back to conventional. No, we're going back to FHA. This was literally what was happening week after week. I'm hearing different news. What in the world is going on? Is this really for me? A place that I saw back in, uh I don't want to get dates. Months before I got it, I said, yo, this is a nice place. Start looking again. It was off the market. Somebody had put in. So I'm like, dang, man, you know, that's, that's, that was a nice place. All right, okay, whatever. Keep going. And looking at houses, took my dad with me, took my mom. Uh, no, I don't like that. No, went to the west side. One place was horrible. Horrible. The, they made the pictures look real good. Horrible. I'm like, man, what the? Maybe, you know what, forget it. Maybe it's just time for an apartment. I, listen, I don't have no problem with an apartment. We'll do that until it's time to go. And so that wasn't even working out. So, you know, I said, okay, we're going to an apartment. Contact the realtor. It was a Thursday, I believe. And I said, in the morning, I said, thank you. 
But at this time, I'm going to be out. I'm not going to look for a place, a house. Um, I'll be looking at other things. And so he's like, oh, are you sure? Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, anytime you want to, you know, I said, sure, absolutely. Well, I just, you know how these things go through your mind. Your mind is going this. It's like, God, it is what it is. So I pick up my phone again, and I said, let me just look on here. Whoa. The place that was off the market all of a sudden came back on the market. And I'm like, well, I really like this place. Mr. Realtor, not sister, Miss Realtor. <laughs> um, I know I just told you I was done, I was out, I'm not, but can we go look at this one, one more, oh, you know, they want to make money. Oh, absolutely, sure, come on. Go there, long story short, God gives it to me. But God, even that, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Supposed to go, then we were dealing with the loan. That's when they're going back and forth and all this. My goodness, what's happening? Is this supposed to happen? Is this really for me? And you're going through all this. God, did I make a mistake? And did I, did I mishear you? And all this stuff going on. I get married. The date was February 8th, 20. 21, yeah, just, yeah, not that long ago. It feels like it's been a long time. <laughs> that was, but I was supposed to have the keys at least two weeks before so I could go move in, start putting stuff in. Thank, long story short, I don't get the keys until I get home from the, after the wedding. Wasn't able to move nothing in. I, Brother Tyrone, thank God for him, he went and picked up the keys for me so I could have them when I got, just, but it was God's will. It was God's will. In the midst of a pandemic, in, in the midst of everything going on, we still had to press forward. God still had things for us. You just got to press forward. Then get married. Okay, God, thank God, you know, I got a 2009, 2009 Nissan Maxima. It served me well. I'll be honest with you. It served me well. It's 2021, and I was driving a 2009 Maxima. I, mileage was good, you know. I kept the oil change and all that good stuff. I wasn't at 100,000 miles. But my AC did not work. See, I'm, I'm actually being a little bit longer than I meant to be. AC didn't work. It didn't work. And I'm like, I can't, I, I can't do heat. Like, I, I just, I, I don't do well with heat. And I'm going to work and I'm going to meetings, coming in all sweaty. And the, that's done. I'm like, God, you know, uh, we, need, we need a better car. I, I, I really need you to do something. There was some back and forth with that. Finally, God came through. I'm just telling you, in the midst of all of it, what God has been doing for us. Not only that, hey, after the wedding, I took a week off, you know, make sure things are taken care of and all that good stuff. I get back to work. Such and such is left, is leaving, is going to be the executive director of NAACP. I'm like, my, that's my, y'all know I talked about it. Crystal, my goodness. I called her, I said, Crystal, yo, I'm happy for you, but also I'm, I'm a little sad because you were my partner, like, to help me go through this. And, and she's like, well, listen, I gave your name to such and such to kind of, I said, oh, really? To kind of take my place while I'm going until they find you. Oh, go through that process. God gives it to me. She told me before, and you heard this testimony before, but she told me before, he's going to pick you. I'm just letting you know. He, he's going to pick you. She said, don't get, you know, whatever. But I'm just, I know him, and I know how he feels about, he's going to pick you. For this. So he's allowed me to do that. There was an increase with that. And all, all this stuff God was doing. And I want to tell him, thank you. I want to tell him, thank you. It could have been another way. It could have been a canceled wedding. It could have been a delayed wedding. God did what he did because he wanted to do it. And I thank him. So he has worked wonders. That was just some of the things he did for me. And there's still more to come. There's still te there's testimonies out there. They're coming. They're coming. But I want to shift a little bit and take us to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to hurry up and get out of the way. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Torah. Moses, the one who spoke face to face with God, the one who interceded on Israel's behalf many times, he wrote this book. The book of Deuteronomy was written at the end of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. At the end. At the very end. As we know, the journey Israel traveled was an 11-day trip that turned into a 40-year 
journey. 11 days. We could have been there. But it's been 40 years. All because of unbelief. I didn't take God at his word. I had a different opinion about what God was saying. All because of unbelief. He received that unbelief, disobedience, along with murmuring and complaining will cost you the promise. What happened was those 10 spies, there was 12 of them, but 10 of them came back with the evil report. They didn't see what God was showing them. They were commanded, go spy out the land and bring the report back. But they came back with something different. They missed what God was showing them, a cluster of grapes that required two people to carry them. They missed that. I'm trying to load you with abundance. You had to have two people carry a cluster of grapes. I'm trying to show you what I have for you. But you didn't see it. <laughs> Imagine a blessing so big you have to call up your brother. Yo, I need some help. I need some help. Listen, Dick and Colson told me they needed seven cars to carry the gifts home from the baby shower. Seven cars. I need some help. But, but, but if you don't believe God, you'll miss that. Instead of focusing on the abundance of the blessing, 10 of the 12 spies focused on how strong the people of the land were and how great the walls of the city were. And they began to name all the different nations that dwelled in the south and in the mountains round about it. Church, we must be careful who we lend our ear to. Who has your ear? If it's the wrong person, they will cause you to miss out on the abundance God has for you. In those 40 years, a whole generation died simply because they listened to faithless and fearful reporters. Those 10 spies or reporters did nothing but incite fear and doubt in the camp. Because of fear and doubt and murmuring and complaining, God said, all right, this, this, is, this is what you're going to do after I've done so much. I parted waters for you. I defeated all those gods there for you. I made all these ways. This is what you're going to do. You have a different thought, a different opinion. I'm trying to get you on this course to this promised land, but you don't want to go. You rather go back to Egypt. Okay, okay. You're going to die. You're going to die in this wilderness. Only Caleb and Joshua are going because they didn't put any limits on the limitless God. They didn't put any limits on him. So you're going to inherit the promise. So in Deuteronomy chapter 1, Moses speaks to all the people. Listen, this is the new generation now. The old generation died because God said they would because they didn't believe him. It's a new generation. And the, the book of Deuteronomy is him restating the law. And he gives some other instructions. So Deuteronomy chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 5, and I'm almost done now. On this side, Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law. This is what it says, saying, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Yes. Long enough. Yes. I'm going to echo these words for somebody right now. God is saying, Ye have dwelt long enough. In this mountain, right here where you are. You've been here a little bit too long now. God wants someone to know that you've been here too long. You've been in this cycle that seems to never end. Yes, I've been good to you. Yes, I've been providing all your needs while you've been in this mountain, in this cycle. I've been really good, but you've been here too long. Yes, I perform miracles for you in this wilderness experience. But you have been here long enough. Too long have you been going around and around and around and around and around. Here I am again. Next month, here I am again. The next month. God's saying enough is enough. Let's look at the second chapter of Deuteronomy. Starting at verse 1. 
Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spake unto me, and we can pass Mount Seir many days. Many days. And the Lord spake unto me, this is Moses talking, he spake unto me saying, ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye northward. I'm almost done here, and, and, and if I were to, I know it's late to leave a topic, but I'm going to leave one. Turn ye northward. Northward represents greater. Northward represents an abundance of God's goodness. Northward is greater spiritual growth. It's the increase God has always intended for you. Turn ye northward. North is where God is. Turn ye northward. North is where God is calling you. It's a higher calling. Come up higher. Expand your possibilities. Turn ye northward. We've been here a long time. It's time to turn northward. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Don't be afraid of what your eyes may see and the reports you hear from others. God is saying, turn ye northward. And, and, and to those who might be saying, oh, you know what, I, I, I've done too much. It's too late. I've disobeyed too long. I can't go up. I'm carrying too much. I'm just weighed down. I, I, I can't. Let Paul talk to you. Yes, Philippians 3, yes, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do. Forgetting, forgetting those things which are behind. I reach forth, I reach forth unto those things which are before me. I press, I said I press for the mark. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's time to reach for and press. Turn ye northward. Ooh, that's what he wants you to do. Turn, turn, turn. And we've been hearing the word repent means to turn. He wants you to. Repent and turn northward. God is saying, you've been in this stale place far too long. You've been stagnant far too long. <laughs> We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. Because this is what he wants to do for us. He wants to lighten the load so you can go up higher. It's time to turn northward. Guess what's going to do it? Guess what's going to do it? Guess, 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 guess. Obedience will propel you northward. Woo. I said obedience. Yay! Yeah! It's going to propel you northward. Just tell yourself, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm turning, and I'm going to go north. I'm turning, and I'm going to go north. Your opinion doesn't matter. Your reasons don't matter. I have to go north. There is a city waiting on me. A dwelling place.